Next up, we got the rise of Ellie De La Cruz. Ellie De La Cruz. All right. Now, I heard about this dude. Actually, my dad talked. My dad told me. All right. He said he been going crazy right now. I looked him up. He is going crazy. All right. So, I'm going to check him out. His backstory. We're going to look up uh, what's going on with him. Who is this dude? All right. Bro is a GOAT. <laughs> All right. Bro is the new GOAT coming into the league. I guess he was from the minors or something like that. So, you're going to check it out. All right. Now, if y'all want more MLB videos, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also, you can comment down what um, videos I should react to. Maybe it's about LA Daily Cruz. Um, I want to check some highlights out. Even though he just got in the league, it is like a couple highlights. It's like two minutes long or something like that. So, I'll check that out. Uh, so, yes, let me know. So, hey, let's see what it be, Tom. Bye. Like Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, and Ronald Acuna Jr., just to name a few. These are players that have breathed the game of baseball from a very young age. Their commitment to basically sacrificing their childhoods in order to become the best has paid off, as they are now the greatest in the world at what they do. But before these guys were in the limelight tearing up the league, they were prospects who were gaining attention because of one word. Also, too, I'm live right now. You see a chat on the screen. Um, I be live every day on, on Kick. Uh, look, it's in my link in description. Every day. Potential. In 2023, scouting and developing a strong farm system is more crucial than ever. Because of this, fans are constantly being introduced to new, young talent with potential to be MLB stars. What many believe as the most recent example of this is Cincinnati Reds' top prospect, Ellie De La Cruz, who has shown superstar potential in just nine games at the MLB level. In less than wow. two weeks since getting called up, he has taken the baseball world by storm. And similar to the three guys I mentioned, he was born to do this. He's a six foot five switch hitting infielder out of the Dominican Republic. His very first major league hit was a double, which came off the bat at 112 miles per hour, Damn. meaning it only took him one game to have the hardest hit ball by any Reds player this season. But this hey, the best thing I love about any of uh, all these stories or any just underdog story, bro, is I love like when they come up from basically, you know what I'm saying, not getting drafted to the league or whatever, then coming into the league, or maybe they do get drafted. But they get drafted really low and they barely get any PT. You know what I'm saying? And then now they make their name. They get they they get they they chance and they make their name. I love it. Every time I love it. 112 mile an hour laser didn't stand atop the team leaderboard for long because the next day he crushed his first career homer with an exit below of 114.8 miles per hour. The ball went 458 feet and almost left the entire stadium. Not Damn. only is he incredibly powerful, but he's also fast as hell. His fastest sprint speed so far has been tracked at 31 feet per second, which is number Dang! one in baseball. Yo, I, no, I did hear about he was still in the bases. I did hear about that, not gonna lie. Sprint speed so far has been tracked at 31 feet per second, which is number one in baseball. Meaning at his peak, it takes him less than three seconds to get from one base to another. And by oh the way, God. he's doing all of this at the age of 21 years old. Dude, Ellie De La okay. Cruz has shown in his small sample size of MLB level play that consistency is the only thing stopping him from becoming baseball's next superstar. He's got the size, the strength, the speed, and skill to be an exceptionally dangerous player in the coming years. But it wasn't always like this. Ellie's path to the majors was very different compared to your typical top prospect, and it makes for a pretty wild story looking back on it. On January 11, 2002, in Sabana Grande de Boya, Dominican Republic, Ellie Antonio de la Cruz was born. While the DR is known for producing some of the greatest baseball players of all time, such as Albert Pujols, Pedro Martinez, and David Ortiz, things are a little bit different in the city Ellie was born in. Before him, yeah. only three players from this area made it to the majors, with the best and most notable out of the three being Jose Siri, current outfielder on the Rays. This part of the Dominican Republic doesn't- Man, look how it looked, bro. We already take, we already take it for granted, you know what I'm saying, how good our stuff is. Um, Ma, this could just be a bad representation. They could just be driving through the hood of it, like the worst parts. You can go to, you can go to worst parts of any city and it's going to look fucked up. So I don't know if this is just a bad representation or this is really how I look every day. The whole city. You know what I'm saying? But, damn. It doesn't produce stars, and there might be a reason for that. The city does not have any type of organized youth baseball league or advanced facility seen in other parts of the country. This meant that if Ellie wanted to gain attention from scouts, Sabana Grande de Boya was not the place he should be. As a kid, he would often spend hours outside every day hitting tennis balls around as a hobby, but it was clear that if he truly wanted to take his game to the next level, he needed to relocate. The brother of his first baseball coach saw the passion and potential that Ellie had. 
He offered him the chance to move in with him, where he would provide De La Cruz with food and training, training that he desperately needed if he wanted to fulfill his dream. Sounds like a no-brainer. The problem was, at this point in time, Ellie was only six years old. His coach's brother had long conversations with his mom, trying to convince her to let her child oh, move in with him. Since Ellie's mom knew how much baseball meant to her son, she agreed. Over the next four years, he played in a few different youth leagues that neighbored his hometown, but the changes to his life got even more drastic when he was 10. A different baseball coach in the DR recommended that Ellie move to the capital city of Santo Domingo. Here, there was a very high level of competition between kids from all over the country trying to go pro, probably the best move for De La Cruz to make in order to take the next step in his career. He once again moved, this time living over an hour away from his family. The team that he played on already had a shortstop, which was his position, so he was forced to pitch and play left field. He said in an interview that in this league, he was playing against kids with rich parents, so they had much nicer equipment with a better shot at getting noticed. But everything changed during one tournament, where he played in front of the Bellario family. This family, who had some money, was going to start their own team, and they wanted De La Cruz Ooh. on the roster. They provided him with a new glove. And that shows you, like, don't ever give up. Just because, you know what I'm saying, somebody might be coming from, from a, a richer family than you, do not mean that, you know what I mean, that you could just sit here and just be pouting around and giving up just because, you know what I mean, because you never know what happens. Literally, what is the chances that somebody starts their own league, and they want, and they, they try to find future talent, and they see you? You might not have the stuff, but they can give you the stuff. Now you looking like that guy. And some money right, was going to start their okay. own team, and they wanted De La Cruz on the roster. They provided him with a new glove, new bat, and a place to live. However, as the wow. years went on, Ellie was seriously starting to get discouraged. He kept witnessing players around him get signed to MLB teams while he was left in the dust. He said, quote, there was a point where no one was paying attention to me. I wanted to go back home and be with my family. Nobody really noticed me. Scouts didn't really like me. In the academy, I wasn't making cuts during tryouts, and that's why I wanted to go back home. Ellie was debating whether or not his dream would pan out, and at this point in time, it was looking bleak, as he was on the brink of quitting. But he recalled the Valario family convincing him to stay, saying, do not leave, you're going to be good. Thankfully, De La Cruz decided to stick it out, and it's a good thing he did. Because one day in 2018, with a little bit of luck, everything changed. A Red Scout came into town with the intention of looking at a different shortstop during a workout. Ellie was told by coaches in the Dominican Republic to attend this workout because he was worse than the shortstop the scout was looking at and it would make the other guy look better. After several days of showcasing their talent side by side, more and more scouts came to watch, but not because of the other guy, because of Ellie. He walked away from this workout that he wasn't even originally supposed to attend with a contract from the Cincinnati Reds for $65,000. Wow. While this was Ellie's big break, the road ahead was still going to be... Literally, the, look at the chances, bro. He went to a random, just a normal workout one day. You know what I'm saying? And what happens? And what happens, bro? He got signed for 100 bands. Wow, bro. All your dreams can come true. All your dreams. Walked away from That's this right. workout that he wasn't even originally supposed to attend with a contract from the Damn. Cincinnati Reds for $65,000. While this was Ellie's big break, the road ahead was still going to be a tough one. In 2019, he put up decent numbers as a 17-year-old in the Dominican Summer League, but nothing to really wow the organization. And in case he didn't overcome enough obstacles to get to this point, let's throw in a global pandemic to shake things up. The Reds were forced to release 48 minor league players because of COVID, and just like that, once again, Ellie thought his career was over. However, the call saying he was being released never came, so he remained as a member of the organization. Okay. He spent the entire 2020 year in the DR grinding his ass off, playing pickup baseball games wherever he could find them, and made tremendous strides in his overall development as a player. De La Cruz wasn't invited to Cincinnati's 2021 spring training. Instead, he attended the post-draft camp, where it quickly became clear to the entire franchise that they truly had something special brewing under the radar this entire time. He was sent to the Arizona Complex League, where he batted 400 with 3 home runs and 13 RBIs in 11 games. He was quickly promoted to low A ball, where again, he showed that he could hold his own. Next year saw another promotion where he played in high A ball and double A. It was in these leagues that we saw flashes of a superstar in the making, with these being the stats that he put up between the two levels. During this time period, Ellie made the jump from a top 100 prospect to a top 10 prospect in all of baseball. Dang. After the 2022 season concluded, Red's management felt like he earned another promotion. Beginning the 2023 season in AAA, Ellie did not miss a beat. 
In fact, he was actually getting better as the leagues got more competitive. Nice. Fans across America were starting to take notice of the type of player Ellie was. About two weeks ago, on June 6th, he was called up to the big leagues, and the rest is history. Ooh. Ellie De La Cruz is a player that came out of... So he literally just joined the league last month, bro? Last month. It's almost. It's literally just, it's just past a month, four days ago. Wow. Nowhere. He was a no-name just two years ago, but today, Damn. he was one of the most hyped players currently in the league. Never he got to up, where bro. he is by making life-changing sacrifices at a very young age. Over a decade after moving away from home, he finally signed a contract after attending a workout he wasn't even supposed to be at. And Damn. a global pandemic that looked like it might ruin his career turned out to be one of the best things to ever happen to him. Time will tell what Ellie's ceiling is as an MLB player, but even if his career ended today, his story of how he got to the majors will go down as one of the greatest displays of resilience, dedication, and hard work that fans have ever seen. That wraps up Dang. this video. Dang, W. De La Cruz. Now we gonna look at some. Um, we definitely gonna look at some highlights from him. Um, so y'all look out for that. I love y'all. We out.